When it comes to industries polluting the planet, we don't hear much about steel, even though it accounts for about 10% of all emissions. That's a huge number. But what if there was a better way to produce steel? A company in Sweden called Stegrer claims to have a method of creating steel with barely any CO2 at all. I'm Gernot Wagner, a climate economist at Columbia Business School, and I'm in Stockholm to find out what makes Stegra's green steel so different from traditional steel. How does a typical steel plant look? Like, what's going on in you know, one of these large European steel plants? If we take the typical steel plant in Europe, you would have iron ore coming into the site, and you need to convert that iron ore to pure iron. And the way that you do that is that you use a blast furnace and you use coke in the mix in order to get rid of the oxidant so that you get CO2 mm -hmm. uh, and you get iron. So the initial step in traditional steelmaking uses coal to strip oxygen from iron ore to make iron. That's where over 80% of all the emissions in steelmaking come from. Many steel companies are trying to find creative solutions. For example, if you use natural gas instead of coal, you can create hydrogen and carbon monoxide. Those gases react to do the same job as coal, but using a fossil fuel like natural gas is only slightly cleaner. That's why Stegra decided to go in a totally different direction. Use water to create 100% pure green hydrogen on site. So we will split the water into hydrogen and oxygen and use the hydrogen to reduce the iron ore into iron. And so the emissions will be water or steam. So essentially you're replacing natural gas Correct. with green hydrogen. Correct. And green hydrogen is produced by using electricity Correct. and water. Correct. No CO2 emissions. It's incredible. Almost no emissions. The iron production uses green hydrogen and the slabs are heated with electricity. Because of the scale of Stegra's vision, and because of how much water and cheap electricity is needed to create green hydrogen, Stegra needed to set up shop in a place where there was plenty of space and resources. That's why they chose Bodø, a remote area in northern Sweden just outside the Arctic Circle. If you take everything into account right now, which has to do with infrastructure, getting access to water, getting access to the grid, I think Boden is purely unique. Stegra believes that making green steel isn't just possible and profitable, but necessary. So a big reason why you are here is climate change. Yeah. But uh, are we chasing the impossible goal here? Um, are we making progress? We are not chasing an impossible goal. I think we're chasing the only goal we can have if we want to have a livable planet. I think the planet is on fire and we need to do something about it. It's every business leader's responsibility to not only build a great business, but actually also take responsibility for the planet and society. Our customers, they have done their homework. They know that there will be a tipping point where it makes more sense to buy green, sustainable material, rather than buying brown, dirty material with a CO2 tax on top of it. This is a European thing uh, with green steel, I would say. That has to do with the framework with the price on carbon that we have in Europe, which makes it possible then for our customers also to calculate, okay, once there will be a carbon tax on material like steel in the future, which is coming now, how much will that cost us? But green steel has an additional cost, known as the green premium. So the green premium is the additional price we can get for a product that is decarbonized. What we compare with then is, is brown steel, which contains a lot of CO2, and we call it dirty. And then the green steel, we say it's clean, it's got no CO2 or very limited CO2. And what the customer is willing to pay for this decarbonized product uh, is what we define as the green premium. Stegra believes green steel will be the norm in the future. But not all steel companies have the capability to make green steel. They need green hydrogen and green iron. That's why Stegra's long-term plan isn't to compete with legacy steel companies, but to sell their products and help the industry transition. It's a small but potentially profitable niche. There is enough steel making capacity in the world already today, but it's the two first steps of producing the iron that, that needs to change. If you take that full chain from the mine to the steel on the hood of the, the car, 75% of that decarbonization happens in the hydrogen production and iron making. We don't want to call ourselves disruptors, we would rather call ourselves enablers for this industry to transform. That's the gamble Stegra is willing to take. 
It's incredible to imagine that very soon this company could help transform the steel industry and maybe our planet forever.